In 100 years, they will look back upon this day and they will write, this is how Meme War 3 began. The great meme war may be upon us again, my friends, as Elon Musk announces, or I should say, well, Elon Musk announces he'll be digging in today in response to a comment from CatTurd, that's a Twitter user, about shadow bannings, bannings, etc. The report from Bloomberg is that Elon Musk intends to scrap lifelong bans on users. There is a plethora, a litany of individuals who have been banned, and many unfairly. I'd say mostly unfairly. If, if somebody got banned from Twitter because they were posting child abuse or something like that, good riddance. If someone was trying to commit crimes, incite violence, good riddance. But so many of the people who were banned did no such thing. And of course, I will instantly shout out Project Veritas, who literally broke no rules. I guess they tried claiming that he was running multiple accounts, some other fake nonsense. James O'Keefe, Project Veritas, is a journalist in a news organization, and they must be reinstated. Babylon B. I mean, it, it just there's so many names. Carpe Donctum posting memes. What did they take him down for? Milo Yiannopoulos. He may return. It's been a while. Carl Benjamin. Here's the story from Bloomberg. But mind you, I have some tweets to show you. The meltdown hath begun. And what's interesting about the meltdown from these leftists is that there's a whole bunch of accounts that are on the left saying, this may be my last tweet because I'm going to get banned or something like that. One user said, I'll stay on this platform until Elon bans me. And then someone responded, what makes you think Elon is going to ban you? And they said, that's how it works. An admission, essentially, that they know when they had ideological control of Twitter, they were banning their political rivals and they loved it. And now Elon comes in and says, we're going to make it fair and balanced. And all of a sudden they all start losing their minds because they genuinely believe that, well, you know, I'll put it this way. When the left comes out and says the right is, does this, that, or otherwise, they're projecting. That's it. They assume the right feels the same way they do about free speech or, or whatever. That, that conservatives, that libertarians, that independents or post-liberals would ban them. So they must retain the power to prevent that from happening. When in reality, they truly don't understand this large group of disparate ideologies because we all basically just believe in freedom of speech. Here's Bloomberg. Musk takes Twitter helm and acts sweeping changes as deal closes. For those that didn't hear, he fired the top executives, the CEO. He fired Vijaya Gade. Yeah, of course, I must. Uh, you guys know that I was on the Joe Rogan podcast. It was a big episode. That's why I've been referencing it with Jack Dorsey and Vijaya, both of whom are no longer at Twitter. And yes, I received many messages. There's videos that people are posting of me. And I must say that that fatter version of me in that podcast makes some good points. But this is uh, Vijaya Gada was the individual uh, Elon fired. Elon Musk wasted no time taking complete control of Twitter, Inc. The billionaire appointed himself chief executive of uh, executive officer, dismissed senior management and immediately began reshaping strategy at what at the at one of the world's most influential social media platforms as his $44 billion take private deal closed. It, it, we cracked a bottle of Louis XIII last night on Timcast IRL. It's a very, very expensive bottle of cognac. And uh, Jack didn't drink. Jack Posobiec does not drink. He had seltzer water. But, we had, you know, he had to cheers. So, so we all had a very delicious and expensive cognac. Musk 51 is replacing Parag Agrawal. I, I love, there are these text messages that are going viral of like Parag being like, Elon, you can't say these things. You can't do these things. And this was when he was buying a minority stake. Elon probably thought when Babylon B got banned, I'll buy a, a little bit, get on the board and try and make some changes. Then Parag comes out and is like, you can't say these things, Elon. And then he's like, this is a waste of my time. And then he buys the company and fires the dude. Oh, Chad move. All right. He's replacing Parag, a person familiar with the matter said, asking not to be identified, discussing internal deli internal deliberations. The mercurial entrepreneur who also leads Tesla Inc. and SpaceX may eventually cede the Twitter CEO role in the longer term, the person added. And uh, Tesla engineers have been brought in to start reviewing the code. We are so excited. Now, I don't know what they'll discover, but I certainly hope that should they discover bias and manipulation that Elon Musk publish it immediately. It's for the greater good. Musk's acquisition. 
puts the world's richest man in charge of a struggling social network after six months of public and legal wrangling. Among Musk's first move, changing leadership. Departures include, oh, departures. Vijaya Gade, head of legal policy and trust, chief financial officer Ned Segal, who joined Twitter in 2017, and Sean Edgett, who has been general counsel at Twitter since 2012. Edgett was escorted out of the building. Whoa. Amazing. Musk also intends to do away with permanent bans on users because he doesn't believe in lifelong prohibitions, the person said. Here, here. I, 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 I think Elon probably saw the Rogan episode with me on it. I mean, especially considering the research he had to do. And that was a big component of what we talked about, that you can't give someone a life sentence for saying a naughty word. You could murder someone in real life and they don't, and it's like you could get 25 years. That's crazy, you know? But the point is, even though we understand that it's the most horrifying thing you can do, commit a murder, there's, there's a lot of horrifying things, but one of the, that we, some people don't get life or the death penalty. Some people go to prison for like eight years. And yet on Twitter, they give you a life sentence. That means people, here's, Elon, free the political prisoners, time served. That means people previously booted up the platform may be allowed to return. A category that would include the former president, Donald Trump. It's unclear, however, if Trump would be allowed back on Twitter in the near term. Uh, Alex Brusowitz on the show on Timcast IRL last night also pointed out Donald Trump's Facebook suspension was a two year suspension, meaning come January, Donald Trump will be back on Facebook and Instagram. In response to a Twitter user complaining, they are being shadow banned, ghost banned, search banned, as well as having followers removed. Musk said a tweet that he will be digging in more today. I love how they said in response to a user, the user specifically was cat turd. You know, for those that don't aren't familiar, cat turd is a prominent Twitter user. It's not just some random nobody. The takeover caps a convoluted saga that began in January with the billionaire's quiet accumulation of a major stake in the company. This we get free speech. It has returned. So it, uh, it shall be soon. Elon Musk tweeted at 8 a.m. Let the good times roll. He tweeted in response to Cat Turd, I will be digging in more today. Cat Turd said, day one of Elon Musk owning Twitter, I'll be doing this every day to see if anything changes. As of now, I'm still shadow banned, ghost banned, search banned, and Twitter removed 1,200 followers today as usual. Nothing has changed. I'll report again tomorrow. Elon said, I will be digging in more today. Oh, yeah. And the left is melting down. This uh, this guy, Abraham Eisenberg, I can't believe uh, Taylor Lorenz we t- retweeted this guy. And this is one of those nonsense legalese garbage posts that people try to make where they're like, I do not give consent to you to use my my words or whatever. OK, here's what he said. I do not allow Elon Musk or any other Elon related person to use my photos, information, messages or tweets, both in the past and in the future. And then I'll break down legally what's wrong with this. And I ain't a lawyer. This statement is to inform Twitter that it is strictly prohibited to disclose, copy, distribute, or take any other action against me based on this account and or its contents. This account's this account content is private and confidential information. Oh, man. Violation of my personal life may be punished by, by law. Note, Twitter will soon be a private organization. All participants should post a note like this. If you prefer, you can copy and paste this version. If you don't publish a disclaimer at least once, you'll automatically allow the use of your photos as well as the information contained in your tweets. Reading replies, he says there's uh, anti-Semitism, blah, blah, blah. Here's the funny thing. Okay, okay, Abraham, let me let me assist you. Uh, who is this guy, Abraham? He's uh, an applied game theorist. He has 18,000 followers and he's been retweeted by Taylor Lorenz. I do not allow Elon Musk or any Elon related person. OK, you, you, you can't. That, that's meaningless to use my photos, information, messages, tweets. The reason this tweet is just stupid is, for one, Elon Musk isn't. Twitter is. Elon, Twitter is an entity. And you can try and make an argument later. But uh, there's a reason why the legal documents will say if it were to address this, it would say, I do not allow Twitter Inc., its subsidiaries, officers and employees, henceforth known as the company and, you know, and parentheses to use the photos. The, the point is, Elon Musk isn't doing it. Twitter is a, is a company that is doing it. But he says, the statement is to inform dollar sign Twitter. I'm sorry, Twitter's been delisted. So, uh, but I, I, you know, he posted this before that. So it, it is strict, strictly prohibited to disclose, copy, distribute, taking the action against blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, 
using this platform, you agree to the terms of service. This won't fly legally. My favorite is when he says, if you don't post a disclaimer at least once, you'll automatically allow the use of your photos as well as information contained in your tweets and private messages. Bro, you're still publicly posting. Everyone can see it. You can't be like, I hereby announce to the world a thing, but no one better share that thing. It's like, bro, you just told everybody. Oh, here we go. Joe Serincion, as I pronounce it, I now approach every tweet as if it could be my last. Uh huh. Who is it? He's verified. He's got 53,000 NATSEC expert, member of the CFR. These people genuinely believe that they will be banned by Elon because even though Elon is saying he believes in free speech, he's going to ban them. This is projection. They say all day, every day they support free speech. Then they ban people because they know they're lying. Well, I don't think Elon is lying. Pradeep J. Shanker highlights a tweet. It's a one individual, basically. I'm, I'm, they blocked me. But he basically said that no one's done more for free speech than Vijay or whatever. And Pradeep says she literally limited speech on the site. She was applauded for doing it. Her actions caused a chilling effect that exists to this day. You can applaud her actions if you like, but just don't go and lie and say it expanded free speech. It's just the opposite. Because they are psychopathic authoritarians. I, I mentioned this the other day. Aiden Paladin on Twitter, you can see it on my Twitter feed, posted citations showing that the left is overwhelmingly just wrong or like based upon greed, envy, hatred and violence. And she was basically saying all of this cited research shows this This is crazy and then posted a list. And boy, did they get mad. But it's unsurprising to any of us. They accuse the right of doing that. And sure, there's hateful people everywhere, violent, greedy, envious. But uh, the quote unquote right now apparently includes liberals. I mean, there are many liberals who are just blindly marching in the cult, but you've got a lot of post-liberal type individuals, me, for instance, Tulsi Gabbard, and uh, we don't agree on, on everything with conservatives. In fact, I was arguing with J uh, Jack Posobiec just the other day about this video and gun rights and, and you know, this, this shooting of a firefighter, but we're friends. We get along. We have good arguments. Danny O'Sullivan says, no word from the fired Twitter execs yet, but Sean Edgett, the fired general counsel, is hitting that like button. Well, he got escorted out of the building. This is amazing. What could have happened? When Parag and Vijay got fired, we just hear like, that's it. But he had to get escorted out of the building. How much you want to bet this dude was like yelling at Elon and saying you're, you're, you're dangerous or whatever. Jim Prosser tweeted, if the reports are true, Parag, Vijaya, Edget, and Ned Segel deserved a more serious appreciation of everything they did at Twitter than what they got. From one X tweet to another, we know exactly how much each of you gave of yourselves over the many years. Thank you. And this was liked by Sean Edgett. Don't let the door hit your bum on the way out, good sir. Don't care. I hope Elon fires everybody. I wouldn't, I wouldn't care if Elon went in there and just deleted Twitter and, and, and said, Twitter's a really unhealthy platform. I'm deleting it. $44 billion down the drain. No, he wouldn't do that. But here we go. How Twitter will change the private company. The social media company went public in 2013, but Elon Musk is taking it private as part of his acquisition of the firm. And it's basically already happened. The uh, uh, Twitter's been delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. It's gone. I took a screenshot because I have 22 shares. Where's my money, Elon? I want my money. You owe me like a thousand bucks. I'll tell you what. Here's the deal. I'll make. I think it's reasonable. In lieu of the twelve hundred dollars I am owed, um, all, all I, Elon, just you can come and sit and have a conversation on Timcast IRL. And if that doesn't suffice, then I will only accept payment in the form of you hand delivering it. Uh, let's say, what do we have? Uh, let's call it next Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, uh, that I will accept uh, delivery of payment on those terms. I'm kidding. I kid. It would be great to have Elon on the show. I would really love to do a sit down with Elon and uh, Joe Rogan. Um, obviously, most people in the world would love to do something like that. But I think there's an opportunity as a follow up to the uh, Twitter uh, uh, podcast that, we, that I did with Joe Rogan back in 2019. You know, I, I think I've, I've since been on Joe's show. How many times now? It's been there was one, two. Is it four times maybe or three times? I'm not sure. And then he ended up coming on IRL. So obviously it would be really, really big for me. And Joe and Elon are probably like, eh, maybe. But I think it would be fantastic. Of course I would, though. It's it's a it's it, you know, it'd be a dream show to do. Right. All right. Here we go. So uh, let's see. Mr. Musk, who was trying to take Tesla, his company private, quizzed Mr. Dell, who had done the very thing. 
with his eponymous computer company in 2013. I was really asking him about, did he find being private was good? Mr. Musk recalled in a deposition about the Tesla effort. Blah, 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 blah. Making Twitter a private company gives Mr. Musk some advantages. Unlike publicly traded companies, privately held firms do not make quarterly public disclosures about their performance. They're also subject to less regulatory scrutiny and can be more tightly controlled. That means Mr. Musk can make over Twitter, including tweaking the platform's content rules, its finances and priorities without having to consider the worries of the investing public. It's hard to run a public company if you think you should be the one running it and you're not open to other views from people like stockholders. Here is how it might change. As part of buying Twitter, Musk is merging the social media company with X Holdings, a corporate entity that he established in Delaware to handle the deal. X is buying out all of Twitter's stock and will control the service. And Mr. Musk will control the holding company. That's very, very interesting. We'll see how that works. Um, What may happen is a holding company. Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how that we'll see what happens. What happens to Twitter stock? Twitter will be delisted from the stock exchange. It already has been. Shares will no longer be uh, tradable in September. I, think about this. When Twitter stock, if you listened to Will Chamberlain, when Twitter stock tanked from like 50 bucks to 30 bucks and Will kept saying he can't get out of the deal, he's going to have to pay the money. You could have bought, you could have put your entire life savings into Twitter stock knowing if you believed Will Chamberlain that it was a guarantee. They say in September, Twitter shareholders approved the company's sale and agreed to sell the stock to him for a $54.20 share. Investors will be able to claim the cash value of their shares. Cool. What happens to Twitter's board of directors? With the deal, the board of directors will dissolve and its nine members will no longer preside at the company's operations. (laughs) Mr. Musk will most likely appoint a new board made up of friends and investors. Yo, I want to see you got to get Joe Rogan on the board of directors. You just got to do it. The new board will be responsible for plotting Twitter's trajectory as a private company. Top executives have already been fired. Blah, 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 blah. blah. We get it. I love it. This is a waste of time, Mr. Musk retorted to Prague Agrawal. Other executives who were fired include Ned Segel. We understand that under the merger agreement, Mr. Agrawal was potentially set to receive a golden parachute worth about $60 million. Mr. Segel to receive $46 million. Ms. Gade would receive about $20 million. It was not immediately clear whether Mr. Musk intended to make the payments. Oh, come on. The golden parachutes are happening. We can we can say goodbye, good riddance. But these people are going to live like kings for the rest of their lives. They probably already do. They're probably already millionaires. Twitter has about 7,500 employees. Some of them have been, have been jittery. Aw. Their compensation is set to change. Employees typically receive stock options in the company. But with the delisting of Twitter stock, employees are set to be cashed out for their shares they have already had and to be paid with cash bonuses going forward. This is really wow. This is really interesting. Most of these companies have been in the most of these employees have been in the public have been in a public company and are used to public option grants, which are liquid. Going private, Twitter Twitter will avoid some public scrutiny since it will no longer be required to make quarterly disclosures about health of its business. But they will face pressure from banks that lent money to to Elon. He has less public pressure, but he's a lot of private pressure and he gets it. Mr. Musk also took about seven point one billion dollars from equity investors to push the deal through. He may also face pressure from those investors who might expect him to take Twitter public again at some point so they can recoup their investment. I doubt it. I mean, well, hold on. Not in the short term. Elon has said he does want to take the company public again. It just needs to be turned private to fix all of these problems. In some take private deals, owners have opted to sell branches of their company to pay their debts. Mr. Musk could choose to do the same at Twitter. He could uh, reignite Vine a massively popular platform that has been supplanted by TikTok. Boy, was shutting that down a mistake. How about Periscope? Shutting that down was a mistake. Twitter has made such insane failures. I I, I am just surprised. It's conceivable that some aspects of Twitter could potentially be carved off, sold off, or spun off to raise money. Twitter uh, kind of pared down its core mission right now. They could get a little creative. There's rumors that uh, they might buy Rumble or or do some some kind of deal with Rumble. If Twitter were to do a deal with Rumble, that would mean that I have a video platform that instantly has a million subscribers. That is insanely valuable. I have 1.36 million followers on Twitter. Thank you for following, following me on Twitter. I, I, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> I can't believe I have so many followers on Twitter. I got to be honest, because uh, I don't take the platform very seriously at all. However, Zuby tweeted at Elon saying, you need to reward your top creators. 
that will make the platform work better. I mean, look at YouTube. A lot of people are like, why won't you leave YouTube? I'm like, dude, monetization is a big factor. It funds the business to a great degree. Now, memberships at TimCast.com, it's a way bigger priority, but Rumble doesn't make any money. No offense to Rumble. We, we upload to Rumble. All these videos, they're on Rumble. You may be watching this on Rumble right now, but YouTube pays money, big money, and that needs to change. We have to, we have to carve uh, at the machine and, and change it. This is great news. Elon, if he, so if he brings back free speech, if he unbans people, and then he finds a way to mon- monetize top users, Twitter will flourish as the water cooler space for public com- conversations. If he does a deal with Rumble, man, that might actually displace YouTube. That could be huge. They're melting down, my friends. And Elon's not even done anything yet. Well, he fired the executives, so, uh, but we're all happy about that. Not they, not, not them, we are. So um, let's see. I have a feeling that come tonight at 8 p.m. for tonight's TimCast IRL, we are going to be cracking open the cognac again because I'm willing to bet we're going to see people return to the platform today. Bro, Project Veritas is priority number one. I, I know Babylon B, Jordan Peterson, Alex Jones, Donald Trump, Milo Yiannopoulos, Laura Loomer, uh, Carl Benjamin. There's a lot of people. The list goes on. I, I, I think we're going to start seeing it. Come on, let's get it. Elon, release the pr- political prisoners. I'll see y'all at 1 p.m. in the next segment on this channel. Thanks for hanging out.